Ignition sequence start. with the undercover routine. Shh. This strange package came in the mail. It's got a tape recorder inside. I think it might be from NASA. Maybe the big mission we've been waiting for. Let's listen. Your mission, if you choose to accept it, is to learn all you can about the universe. Cool. Uh, I'm ready. You must find the answers to these questions. Okay, go on! How big is the universe? Does it have an end? Where does Earth fit in? What's out there in the universe? This is gonna be good, because the universe is such a large place, there's a lot to be discovered. count one star every second of the day for the rest of your life, do you think you'd be able to count all the stars in the universe? Scientists estimate it would still take you more than six trillion years to count them all. Neat telescope. With this baby, I plan on counting stars tonight. But for now, I can study life forms right here on Earth. Whoa! Look at this odd-looking life form! Okay, Malcolm. You'll probably notice that even with our telescope, most stars still look like tiny specks of light. I know! They're so far away! That's why scientists use light years as a way to measure their distance from Earth. Oh, yeah! Uh, could you explain light years again? Well, first you have to understand the speed of light. As far as we know, nothing in the universe travels faster than light. Light moves at about 300,000 kilometers a second, which converts to 186,000 miles a second. Light rules! Yes, Malcolm, light travels incredibly fast. But light from the sun still takes over eight minutes to reach us. And most objects in space are so far away from Earth that it can take years for their light to reach us. So scientists measure distances in light years. The distance light travels in one Earth year, 9.5 trillion kilometers. To understand light years better, try this. Find the Little Dipper constellation. Polaris, the North Star, is at the tip of the handle. The light from Polaris takes 700 years to reach us. Therefore, we say that Polaris is 700 light years away from Earth. That also means when we look at Polaris, we are seeing it as it looked when light first left the star 700 years ago. We are actually looking back in time. It's pretty amazing that the galaxy we live in is only one of like 50 billion galaxies. 50 billion? That's big! A huge! Enormous! Gigantic! Will somebody Gargantuan. turn him off, please? Massive! Mega! Incredible! A galaxy is an enormous collection of stars, dust, and gas held together as a group by gravity, the same force which keeps us on the ground and which holds our own solar system together. Some galaxies are spiral in shape, sort of like a giant pinwheel. Other galaxies have an elliptical or oval shape, and some don't have a defined shape at all. These are called irregular galaxies. Any way you slice it, each galaxy is full of hundreds of billions of stars. The galaxy we live in, the Milky Way, is a spiral galaxy over 100,000 light years wide. That means light has to travel 100,000 years for it to reach end to end. Yes, Malcolm, you've got it. Sometimes when it's very dark out, I can see what looks to be a smooth white streak across the sky. What is that? 
In ancient times, people thought this glowing band of light resembled a river of milk. That's why they called it the Milky Way. But actually, what you're looking at is the center of our galaxy. So where do we fit in? Our sun resides in one of the arms of the spiral. Isn't it wild to think that it's just one of billions of stars and our galaxy is just one of billions of galaxies? You'd think with all the billions and billions of stars out there that space would be really bright. I wonder why space looks so dark. Why is space so dark? Figure it out with two erasers full of chalk dust, a flashlight, and a darkened room. We know light can be seen from its source, like from a star or, in this case, the flashlight. Point it across a long stretch of the room. We can also see the light that's reflecting off the wall. But from the side view, we can't see anything in between. It looks totally dark. Now let's say your hand represents an object in space, such as a moon or a planet. Move it into the light, about one inch from the flashlight. Observe how the light reflects off your hand. This shows us that light can also be seen when it reflects off an object, planet, or moon, or in this case, our hand or a wall. Now take the two erasers and clap them in front of the flashlight, sending chalk dust into the air. The chalk dust represents particles in our own atmosphere. Observe how the air now appears illuminated. That's because the light is now reflecting off the chalk particles in the air. So why is it so dark out in space, even though there are billions of stars? Well, we've seen that light can be seen from its source, stars, and when it reflects off of objects such as planets, moons, or particles, like those found in our own atmosphere. But out in the vastness of space, there is no atmosphere, no air, and virtually nothing to reflect the light of those billions and billions of stars. That is why we perceive space as dark. Come on, we're supposed to be doing NASA research and you volunteered us for babysitting. Look at it this way. In the vastness of space, human life just might be unique. And a baby represents life at its earliest stages. Look at how cute he is. Go! Ah, yes, a perfect lead-in to my explanation of the Big Bang Theory. The most popular explanation of the formation of the universe, generally accepted by most scientists, is the Big Bang Theory. 15 to 20 billion years ago, all the matter and energy within our entire universe was once concentrated into a single small point. Then bang! An enormous explosion occurred, blasting hot particles of atomic matter, such as electrons, protons, and neutrons, out in all directions. It was like a tremendous fireball, far hotter than a nuclear explosion or even the center of the sun. Eventually, these particles cooled and were brought together by gravitational forces. In time, the gas hydrogen formed, then helium. These are the two most common elements found in the universe. About a billion years after the Big Bang occurred, galaxies and stars began to form out of the hydrogen and helium. And it was only four billion years ago that our solar system was formed from a flattened, swirling cloud of dust and gas. Let's see. The universe is about 15 to 20 billion years old. The solar system formed about four billion years ago. And Homo sapiens, or humans, have only been around for about 250,000 years. So we've only been around for a tiny, tiny fraction of the universe's life. You know how I said the Big Bang blasted off particles in an outward direction, forming the universe we know today? Yup. Well, scientists have proof that galaxies are still moving in an outward direction, even today. So will the universe forever move outward? Actually, Malcolm, scientists have two theories about this. The open universe theory states that the universe will go on expanding. Galaxies will continue moving outward. Eventually, all the stars within the universe will use up all their energy and die off. So an open universe could mean an empty universe in billions of years with virtually nothing left in it. Whoa! 
Many scientists, however, believe in the closed universe theory. The principle behind this theory is that the pull of gravity between the galaxies is so strong that they will stop expanding and start moving inward. As everything in the universe collapses inward, there may be what scientists call the Big Crunch. Then there might be another Big Bang, and the whole cycle would start all over again. In fact, in the closed universe theory, it's believed that there could be a Big Bang every 80 to 100 billion years. Double woe! Anyway, we still aren't sure if either of these theories is correct. And who knows? Scientists may come up with a new theory of the universe. Man, everything about the universe is so mind-blowing. How do you think the ancient astronomers felt? They didn't even have the aid of a telescope. For over a thousand years, people believed that the Earth was the center of the universe. This was the geocentric theory of the universe. But in 1507, a Polish astronomer named Copernicus went against popular belief and proposed that the sun was, in fact, the center of the universe. This was the heliocentric theory. Wait a minute. That's not exactly right either. No, Copernicus was on the right track. But actually, the sun is at the center of our solar system, not the entire universe. In the 1600s, the Italian astronomer Galileo studied the night sky using a new invention, the telescope. In doing so, he discovered four moons rotating around Jupiter. He proved that all objects do not revolve around the Earth, and it reinforced Copernicus's theory. Go Galileo! But it wasn't until modern times that astronomers could make incredible advances in the study of the universe. I'm a modern kind of guy. Malcolm. In 1924, astronomer Edwin Hubble pointed a very powerful telescope at a cloud of dust and gas known as the Andromeda Nebula. He discovered that this cloud was actually a whole other galaxy. He renamed it the Andromeda Galaxy. It's 2.2 million light years away from Earth. Discoveries like the one Hubble made have proven just how vast the universe is and what a tiny part of it Earth is. Hey, Stanley, I hear that a black hole can suck in a star like a cosmic vacuum cleaner. Maybe I should get my mom one. Get her a black hole? No, a cosmic vacuum cleaner. Malcolm, I think you're missing the point. Black holes aren't household appliances. But if they were, with their suction power, your house would be cleaned as fast as the speed of light. Malcolm. Black holes are thought to be all that remains of massive stars. When a massive star runs out of fuel, it implodes, collapses inward, pulled by its own strong gravitational force. The gravity of a black hole is so powerful that not even light can escape its pull and anything near it will be sucked into it. Ah, like a cosmic vacuum cleaner. We can't see black holes, but scientists have gathered enough evidence to prove they actually exist. Black holes are a mystery that scientists are still trying to figure out. black hole is formed, let's say this balloon represents the core of a star and the tinfoil represents its outer material. Put it on a scale to see how much it weighs. Now, pop the balloon. Pop! Carefully crumple the foil into a loosely compacted ball and weigh it again. Keep crushing and weighing until it's the smallest size possible. This is a key element in the formation of a black hole. Even though the huge star has collapsed into a very small space, it still has the weight of the original star. <coughs> Are you looking for signs of alien life forms again? No, I've given up on that. Now I'm looking for electromagnetic waves. With a magnifying glass? Don't think so. How can you look for something that's invisible? Invisible? Yeah, you can see light waves, but not other electromagnetic waves, even though they're all around us every second of the day. I'm telling you, there's just so much out there in the universe that we can't see. What do you mean? We can see the moon, 
We can see the stars. Yeah, but we're just seeing visible light, one form of radiant energy. What we can't see is all the other forms of radiant energy in the universe. Radio waves, microwaves, infrared waves, ultraviolet waves, X-rays, and gamma rays. All these waves plus visible light waves make up what's called the electromagnetic spectrum. That's why astronomers rely on all sorts of instruments to study the invisible universe. You've heard of the Hubble Space Telescope, right? Sure. Well, that's just one of many satellites placed beyond our atmosphere to observe deep space radiation. Not only does Hubble detect visible light objects like these distant nebulas that are billions of light years away, but it can also detect invisible energy waves such as ultraviolet, infrared, and X-rays. And on the ground, many astronomers rely on radio telescopes. In New Mexico, there's the Very Large Array, a series of 27 radio dishes that work together as one extremely powerful telescope. Radio telescopes detect radio waves, one of the few waves from the electromagnetic spectrum that can easily pass through Earth's atmosphere. These telescopes were the first to bring us information on quasars. The word quasar means star-like, but these mysterious objects are actually a trillion times brighter than the average star, which allows them to be observed from incredible distances. Most quasars are bigger than our entire solar system. Some scientists believe that quasars were among the first objects formed after the Big Bang, and they have been traveling outward ever since. This would make them some of the oldest objects in the universe, and some of the farthest away, around 12 billion light years. So when we study quasars, it's like actually studying the very beginning of the universe. Also, because radio telescopes can pick up signals from faraway galaxies, they're often used to listen for signals that may have been sent by alien civilizations. Take me to your leader. Very funny. Nothing has been discovered yet. But then again, there's a lot of space to cover. My name is John Horak. I'm a gamma ray astronomer. And what that means is that I'm an astronomer just like you might think of a normal astronomer, except instead of studying visible light that your eyes can see, we collect gamma rays from objects in space. Gamma rays are a form of light, just like X-rays or microwaves that you use to heat your hot cocoa, or infrared radiation or ultraviolet that gives you sunburn, except they're much higher in energy. And we use instruments like BATSI, which is the Burst and Transient Source Experiment that orbits the Earth, to collect these gamma rays from things like gamma ray bursts, the most powerful explosions in the universe. We see one of these explosions every day, they come from billions of light years away, and they release more energy in 10 seconds than the sun will put out in its entire 10 billion year lifetime. BATSI is kind of like the Hubble Space Telescope in the sense that it's a time machine. Because when you look deep into space, you're also looking back in time. So we can learn about what the universe was like when it was young, how stars and galaxies formed, and how the universe evolved to what we see today. So I think we've learned a lot about the universe today. Do you think the voice on the tape will be pleased with our efforts? Uh, Malcolm, I have to admit something. What? Well, that tape wasn't exactly anonymous. You must find the answers to these questions. It was me on the tape. I just wanted us to go on a really cool mission, so I made one up. Man, I can't believe you! I didn't mean to hurt your... Uh, yes? Uh, uh-huh? Yes, yes, sir. We're available. Malcolm, it's a mission! Yeah, I'm not gonna fall for that twice. I swear, it's true. It's the real thing. Do you swear on all the stars in the Milky Way? Yes! Then what are we waiting for? We gotta make sure we know our stuff. Okay, real quick. How big is the universe? Well, we don't know for sure, but astronomers are working hard trying to find an exact answer. 
For starters, they measure space objects in terms of light years, the amount of time it takes for light to travel in one year. And they study faraway space objects like other galaxies, and especially quasars. We were also wondering about the future of the universe. Most scientists agree on how the universe began. The Big Bang Theory, when an incredible explosion sent hot material outward in all directions from a tiny center spot. There's less agreement on the future of the universe. Some scientists believe the universe will go on expanding. That's the open universe theory. But others feel the galaxies may stop expanding one day and start moving inward. That's the closed universe theory. So far, so good. How about where does Earth fit in? Well, our planet circles the sun. And the sun is just one of hundreds of billions of stars within the Milky Way galaxy. And the Milky Way is one of more than 50 billion galaxies. Finally, we wanted to know what's out there in the universe. Besides billions of stars and billions of galaxies, there's lots of stuff we can't even see. So far, I think the weirdest thing we've learned about is black holes, a collapsed, massive star whose gravitational pull is so strong that nothing, not even light, can escape. The universe is truly a big and awesome place. How embarrassing, posing as a store window mannequin? Shh, we're not supposed to move. Um, Stanley? Yes, Malcolm? I have to sneeze. Well, what do you want me to do? Go ahead. But we're not supposed to... Shoo! <laughs> Stanley? Yes, Malcolm? How do you clean the inside of a face shield? <laughs>